Hey, it's Tom from Tom's Tunes. Today we're installing this Marpak Universal Control uh, binnacle mount, topside mount, on this large console from Pontoon Stuff. It's a really pretty quick and easy process if you think about it, uh, in terms of putting the assembly together, reversing. It's all pretty one or two steps, and you're ready to go for this Mercury uh, Gen 1 cable setup. I'm comfortable doing this sort of stuff because I do it every day but it shows that you following the right instructions at home are fully capable of doing this too. This is where we're gonna place it. This is a great spot for that binnacle control. So let's get into installing the Marpak binnacle mount universal. One of the first steps in installing the binnacle control is figuring out if your engine requires a pull for throttle or a push for throttle. The way we're going to look at that, this is my throttle connection here. And in order to make my throttle go, I have to pull in order to open my throttle. That is a pull to open throttle. Uh, the alternative would be if this pushed away from the starting point in order to move the throttle body and everything there. So you're going to determine that because that plays into your control box and how you're going to configure it to start. So one of the first things that I did is I removed this back plate, just a couple of machine screws that hold that in. And what I have to do on this is flip it because right now my throttle is push to throttle, meaning this is gonna push my throttle. Uh, so we need to go ahead and reverse that. It's in the instructions, but we're gonna pull our side cover off and open up the control box to do so. You'll notice that this is in the neutral position. So this is my shift each of these are my shift connections. This is my throttle connection. However, neutral with a lever should be straight up and down. So that's something that we'll adjust while we're pulling everything apart to change it over to a pull throttle instead of a push. We're gonna start by removing this outside screw on the shift handle. Couple things you'll notice. These three wires coming out of your shift handle are your trim and tilt wires. So you have power is the red, blue we say is up, green is down like the sky and the grass. What I have to do is I have to get this, my throttle body, down in the vertical position the opposite way so that this is all the way down here so that I can pull the throttle and forward and reverse. Uh, in order to do that, I loosened this uh, screw, which is connected to this spring. Be careful because the opposite side can drop out but this allows me to lift this and if you look in here there's a square and that's just going to help me because there's a square on the inside of this that's going to line up in that downward position now and there's a groove for this throttle pin to rest right in it used to rest in here it's just a track system a lot of grease in these so just beware probably going to want some uh, towels around or paper towels then I'll take my flathead screwdriver run this back in watch that spring pretty straightforward in terms of adjusting from a pull or sorry a push throttle to a pull now I can orient my shift handle where I want it so in this case you could set it a little bit back a little bit forward but we're going to go straight vertical with it so before settling on that final spot, make sure that before you put the set screw in, when you shift it, it returns back where you want it because you might find when you shift it a couple times and come back to neutral, it's a little farther back or forward than you like, but we're gonna get it centered the best we can. And when I get it where I want it, I'm just gonna pull that extra slack back through from my trim and tilt wires so I can hide those. And then we'll put our, our set screw back in and then the cover on. Just like that, we've got everything back together, oriented the correct way for this motor. So our next step is gonna be getting our shift and throttle cables installed. This is a pull throttle motor, so we switched our arm here to pull throttle. But what happened was when we went to hook up, this is running Gen 1 Mercury cables for shift and throttle. Uh, Gen 2 wouldn't have this bullet in here or this block of plastic. So what happened was I tried to hook it up, <clears throat> my shift 
wouldn't quite make it. It'd have to extend all the way out just to connect to one of these spots, which wouldn't leave you any room to shift in the opposite direction. Your shift cable should always be right about the middle. They make a kit, U-Flex or Teleflex makes a adapter kit. I'm gonna take this, there's two of them, one for each. I'm gonna pull this little clip off. This will clip on and take the place here of this end and we'll have a new end to connect to the control box. So I'm gonna pop that clip off with a screwdriver and then we'll put, piece this together. <coughs> Pretty easy. There's a little pin on here that's gonna go through on one side. <clears throat> and then we'll lock into position on that side. That clip will go in now. So I'm held into position. What I've done essentially is extended my shifter throttle cable another two inches or so to gain access where it needs to be. <clears throat> when you shift into forward, it's gonna pull our shifter forward to go into forward. So I'm gonna move this bracket, it's just a flathead screw, over into this side to get access to where we pull. So just a flathead screw, That's a, there's a threaded piece that goes in, it can only go, the bolt can only go here, and then that shift can either hook up here or you could pivot it over. Um, but this position is where we're gonna put it. Nice thing on this is our cable is adjustable on the motor side, so I can adjust for that little bit of play in the shift either direction. That plastic bullet will go into the slot here for shifting. And you can spin the cables either direction to make it work. This is our neutral safety switch. So what I'll do with that actually before I hook it up is I'm just gonna direct all of our wires that are inside the control box over away from our shift cable that we don't have to worry about them rubbing. So neutral safety and our trim tilt can both run, I think just both run right through where the shift cable would be on the opposite side. <clears throat> I'm gonna put another pin. This came with the actual control box. A little clip to hold that in place. That is now in, there's a cover that's gonna go on top of this to hold that in place. And that'll hold these wires in place too. So keep that in mind, that's what's gonna lock this in place. If I shift into forward, it's gonna pull that shift cable. And if you look down on the floor here, you'll see that cable in neutral, it's kind of midway, pulling into forward shifting or pushing into reverse to shift into reverse. That's where it should sit. I like the way that looks. Let's move on to the throttle cable. We need our throttle cable to be in a relaxed position because it's gonna pull to wide open throttle. So if we look at this, pretty obvious right away that that's too far of a gap to really pull this, we'd already be halfway open throttle. So that's where we're gonna use the mechanism again on that K35 kit to extend our cable to, into, into the correct position. I used to use a flathead screwdriver, a little gentle pressure to clip it back in place. So this K35 kit, uh, is actually sold separate from your control box. Uh, this one came to us on Amazon. Uh, there's a, a number of websites. Again, I, I believe the brand is Uflex or uh, Teleflex, but it's made for taking a universal box and making it work with these Gen 1 cables. Now I'm gonna put this clip on, on our throttle. <clears throat> That's in place there. So again, I'm gonna shift into forward. When we shift, you don't want to see a whole lot of play in the throttle. So this, I, you see it barely move when it goes into forward just slightly. That's not going to make a big in, impact on the throttle. That's fine. Same thing reverse. We're going to see the throttle or the shift cable move, but not the throttle cable so much until we accelerate. Then we pull to open our throttle. So again, if I were going into forward, I shift into forward then I can gain throttle. That's wide open throttle pinned down. Also keep in mind, we can adjust at the motor. We'll show you how we do that with this style uh, Mercury control cable. We're gonna put this cover on and then we'll be done inside the box. So really pretty quick and easy process if you think about it uh, in terms of 
putting the assembly together, reversing, it's all pretty one or two steps and you're ready to go for this Mercury uh, Gen 1 cable setup. When you put this cover on, just make sure your throttle cables are pushed into place. The way these cables work is that bullet holds the sheathing in place and the cables are a push-pull cable inside of that outer sheathing. So our cable's moving on the inside of this metal and this plastic. We have to pin the sheathing in place and allow the inside mechanism to move. So this is what you see of the inside part of the cable, um, but that will only work if you have the outside pin. We're, we've got that covered now. The bullet now for our throttle is right here Which in this back space. It's the only one it can fit in in the center. And then our shift is in this bottom side to make it pull. If for some reason your motor needed to push into forward, then you would have it on the opposite side, but that's just something you have to look at on your motor. We have our control cables installed. We're ready to actually take our template and cut this out so we can cut out our hole in our console for where that binnacle is going to go, that top side shift throttle. On this, this part with the lines through it is what you're actually going to cut out and then I'll stick it on, trace it, and then I'll cut it with a Dremel tool. If you have a fiberglass or wood console, wood underneath, you might use a jigsaw to cut it out. For these rotor molded plastic consoles, we're going to use a uh, Dremel tool that'll cut our hole. When you're mocking this stencil up, you could play it safe, go direct center. On this control box, our shift throttle uh, arm is actually on the left side. So I'm gonna just cheat over a little bit to give myself a little extra space. And then I like to come down just slightly because that shift throttle handle, we don't wanna come into our switches. So I like where I'm at here. You could measure it out to make it perfect, um, but I'm just gonna give myself a rough, a rough starting point. with a couple dots. And now I'm gonna take my tape measure across and just make sure I'm the same distance on, on each dot. I'll make them a little bit more bold. Then I can line this back up and make sure that I am straight up and down. You're gonna cut on just barely the inside. So I'm gonna to try to leave a little bit of Sharpie all the way around. That way I can always take a little bit more if I need to. But generally you're gonna have a little bit of room to play to eyeball it to make sure it's where you want it when it's time to screw it in place. I take my Dremel tool and we're just gonna run this all the way around. Always make sure I've looked underneath, make sure there's no wires dangling or tied up close by. We don't wanna cut into that. We've got our hole cut. So I'm gonna do, I need to drill a hole actually down in the bottom of my console for my shift throttle cables to go through. Before we put our cables down through the hole we cut and <clears throat> line everything up to screw the control box in, we are going to put our screws back in, or our bolts rather, for the control box. Just to put the casing back together and then our screws that hold that in place to the dash will go through the other holes. The last thing I'm gonna do before we get ready to drop it in is I'm gonna go and uncoil these wires. So these <clears throat> are gonna be my trim and tilt. And then another one that you might be uncomfortable with if you're not sure what it is, is this yellow and red. This is your neutral safety switch wire. And it's just <clears throat> the same wire with the same ends. And these are gonna splice into my key switch. I have the same wires coming out of my key switch Without these connected to anything, nothing happens when I turn the key. When I put these together, the engine will turn, but you have to connect each from your ignition to each from your shift throttle in order to have that neutral safety so you can't start the motor in gear. We're gonna run these wires <clears throat> down through the hole with the cables, and I'll work on splicing those back together uh, when I get underneath and get everything in place. The last thing you need to make sure you do is position your grommet, your rubber grommet, if you're using that in place uh, to make sure that you are not running everything through and then trying to add this later. So this is gonna rest right on the hole we cut. So when I put my cables through, I'm just gonna make sure that 
This is slid all the way up by the time I get them through the hole. Grab it through. I'm gonna go under the boat real quick to get those pulling through the way that I want them and that way I can route them the right way. I have my shift throttle cables that came down through the deck. I'm gonna run them back and I run them into the transom. That way I don't need a big loop out in front of the motor. I can run them through the transom, make sure there's enough slack and the motor will turn um, the way it needs to and have slack in the cables. So generally speaking, on your shift throttle cables, you don't want a super tight bend, ideally, you know, an eight inch radius or better. Um, something to keep in mind because it'll be stiffer, shift and throttle, but also they'll wear out faster if they have too tight of a bend in them. So we're gonna try to keep the bend soft. I'm gonna run them back to the transom. Then I dump them into the transom. I'm gonna go pull them out from the outside. If you're buying new shift throttle cables, not a bad idea if you start with a new box. Generally speaking, you've got two to three feet down to the, to the top of your pontoon. Then you're gonna measure your distance to the back corner of the boat. Then you're gonna measure your distance from the back corner to the center line. It's usually four feet, might be four, three if you have an eight and a half a wide boat. Might be different if you have a narrower boat. At that point, the general rule is to add two feet. That gives you a little extra slack in the cables. Not a bad idea to add three feet on a pontoon boat. We could have a loop in front of the engine if we needed to, or everything can be tidy. But underneath the deck, your, your shift throttle cables, they can, they can wave a little bit if you got too long of cables. But guess what? If you have too short of cables by even six inches to a foot, that's a major bummer because you got to pull everything back apart. So air on the longer side, there's room under a pontoon boat. No one's going to see that extra slack. Uh, on this, we've got our shift throttle cables looking at them two ways to figure out which is which first one without going to the shift throttle box this is fully extended telling me that this is our throttle cable because i know that this is going to pull this is our shift because it's lying in the middle so if i go to the control box really quick and we'll have miss Corey hold these cables the top one remember that's your shift so that should be the first one to move when i shift into forward Likewise, if I keep going and give it more throttle, knowing that, we can get to hooking them into the motor. We have a little bullet device or a bullet holder. So we have these barrels uh, in the holder. They're going to rest in there in this housing, and that's going to lock your sheathing in place again so the cable itself can move. I'm going to line this up. If you look, this is my shift mechanism. I'm, that's forward if I come back to neutral. That's neutral. I got a little bit of play in there, but not a whole lot. If I put this in place, my cable is way past that point. I'm going to adjust this barrel by turning it to shorten it so I can meet this hole in my cable with this post. That looks pretty good. We'll tighten that back down with a wrench once we get them both in place. And then our throttle cable, same rules apply. My throttle here, when backed all the way out, I'm gonna hit the end, which is a good thing. So I wanna make sure that, I, if anything, I'm gonna err on pushing this tight rather than having the throttle partly open. I'm a smidge long. So we're gonna shorten that up. That looks good. We're still bottomed out here with the throttle. And before I tighten everything down, we're just gonna test them, put this clip back in place that holds everything in its housing. We're just gonna test to make sure that when I engage the throttle, that this moves properly and bottoms back out. And then likewise, I'm gonna make sure that I can shift. If you're testing your shifter without the motor running, you might have to spin the prop with your foot in order to get that to move for you. My throttle's still bottomed out, and our shift is back in neutral. It felt good. Let's test reverse. Again, everything's back in position. I would call this 
good to go, ready to run on the hose when we get everything done. The last thing to check is to make sure once you've shifted a few times forward, neutral, reverse, is make sure that that neutral safety switch is still working. I'm comfortable doing this sort of stuff because I do it every day, but it shows that you following the right instructions at home are fully capable of doing this too. I've got my control shift and throttle cables run down through the hole. Our grommets in place here. I'm gonna make sure that I run those wires through the grommet. Down into the console as well. And then, voila, that's where our, co our control box will go. I can always, so I have a little bit of play even though I cut that on the inside of the line. I can mock it up, make sure I like where it is, oriented as straight as possible. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my bolts through. They, it comes with four bolts. I recommend using a bolt. We don't want this coming loose uh, versus just a screw. So I'm gonna grab that hardware and a drill bit and we'll drill that hole. Typically it's a 3 16th inch bit. You have two options here. You could drill that 3 16th hole and run your machine screw through. It's flat head, it's gonna sit flush. Or if you're working by yourself, you can go to a slightly smaller bit. Well, we're just gonna mark all of our spots first. So I've marked my four holes. Then I can go and drive through. So by using a slightly smaller bit, I'm able to run that machine screw through and it's gonna thread into the plastic just enough to get snug on top. Then I can go on the backside and tighten everything down with the nut and washer. I'm just gonna snug it down with all four. Then I'll go underneath and position everything permanently with the washer and the nut. That gets things nice and snug. I'm gonna go underneath and tighten the nut and washer from the backside with a wrench. Just a small washer and a nut on each one. And that's a 5 sixteenths. I'm gonna use a deep well socket for that. So what I've done now is I've pulled my wiring down from the control box. So I have my neutral safety wires as well as my trim tilt wires. And it's hard to see here but I have my trim tilt harness. I don't have a lot to work with. We're just gonna splice in, hardwire them in. So we're gonna do heat shrink splices. We're gonna strip back our other wires and we'll splice them all together here. Very straightforward. Green to green, blue to blue, red to red. And then I take my trim tilt wires from my control box. They're already peeled back for me. So blue to blue. You could connect these with uh, quick connects as well. Moving on to the easier ones to deal with because I have a lot more wire to work with. We've got our brand new wires coming from the control box. And then we've got our wires coming from the key switch. And what these do, these are your neutral safety wires. Without these connected, and what, uh, your motor won't fire at all, won't even turn over. Uh, and then with them connected, it makes sure that your control box has to be in neutral. There's a detent switch in there in order for your ignition to fire. I'm gonna shorten these up a little bit because I got a lot of wire. And then remember, it doesn't matter which wires connect to which wires, as long as you get two from your ignition going to the two from your control box. So it could be like this, or it could be flipped, and it would still work just fine. Give it that quick test. Need to charge the battery, but at least it turns over. That is it underneath. One more time, that shift throttle, our trim and tilt is right underneath. To engage throttle only, we pull out 
with the handle and then engage the throttle forward. It will click back into place. Now I'm ready to shift and throttle.